Good morning and happy Monday to everyone. We are in the final stretch here, week 15. Also in this lecture, I have week 16 as well. So I kind of combine the two weeks since um, not much left of the semester. Um, hope everyone's hanging in there. Again, feel free to email me if something doesn't look right on your grades. Um, I will be doing all the grading today and should be done by tonight um, for everything that you turned in on Saturday. So um, this week we are, so just kind of ignore that part right now, I'm still grading. Um, this week we're going to be going over Facebook ads, Facebook groups, and salary pricing and contracts. So I just wanted to give you a little overview on when you kind of start out looking for a job and what the salary range looks like for someone who works in social media. And also if you're interested in starting your own little social media um, freelancing or agency, I can kind of give you some tips on pricing and contracts just so you have a little overview depending on which direction you want to go to um, when you graduate. Um, and then just whatever assignments are left, um, I will do a quick overview on that as well. So Facebook ads. Uh, Facebook, if you Google Facebook Blueprint, um, there's a whole section that Facebook gives you on how to set up ads. And there are a ton of different modules and uh, courses. All the courses are free. However, if you want the Blueprint certificate, you do have to pay for that. I don't remember off the top of my head how much that costs, but I heard it's a pretty intense test. But if you want to get into Facebook ads, it'd be a nice certificate to have. Um, and if you don't care about having their certificate, feel free to take advantage of the free courses. I do. Um, they're updated very regularly because Facebook wants you to spend money. They want you to place ads. So uh, we'll start with the business manager tool. We went over this just up barely when we went over Facebook, but the business manager tool allows agencies and advertisers to centrally manage different permission levels for team members working on ad accounts or pages. Here's kind of a screenshot of just what mine looks like. Um, I have the information, credit card information kind of blacked out here, um, but it's just, it, it's a business manager page and your clients can set these up and then give you permission to join them or maybe the corporate company that you work for has it set up and they allow certain people to have access to the business manager. It's a great way to stay organized by having all the assets in one place and seeing who has access to what. So who should use business manager? Um, these are the different reasons here. So if your business has a marketing team, if you manage assets, if you use a third party, like an agency or a vendor, so me with my Janovic communications, I would be a third party agency or vendor. If you need control over access and permissions, or if you need to keep your business secure, because there are credit cards involved in Business Manager. So why do you have to use Business Manager? Um, if you need more than one ad account, so maybe you work for a really big corporate company and you're placing ads for different products or different departments, maybe you need different accounts within those. Uh, you need to request access to pages or ad accounts. You need business level insights and reporting. Measuring. Facebook focuses on measuring the three core business outcome areas. So there's three core business outcomes. Audience outcomes, which is how many people did your ads reach? How frequently did the ads reach the people you want to connect with? The second one is brand outcomes. Did the ads break through? Are they memorable? Did they generate brand awareness? And the last one is sales outcomes. Did the ads drive purchase intent? Did the ads result in sales, leads, or app installs? Reach and frequency. For measuring audience outcomes, you should focus on the metrics, reach, and frequency in your ad reports. So when you go to campaigns and you want to see your, um, your report here, you have reach and frequency are two columns in here. So reach is the number of people who saw your ads at least once, which is different from impressions, which may include multiple views of your ads by the same people. Frequency is the average number of times each person saw your ad. So really important to know the difference of these two here. 
Split testing, also known as A-B testing, same thing that you use in email marketing, um, helps you understand how different aspects of your ads affect campaign performance. Let's you test different versions of your ad so you can see what works best, then keep building on the campaign or make changes. Each ad set tested has one distinct difference called a variable. Target audience, delivery optimization, placements, or creative. So you might see um, one product, one ad, the exact same copy, the exact same demographics and audience. The only thing that changed was the image. And you do an A-B test. Hey, does image A work better than image B? And if image A is getting a lot more reach, um, then you might want to cancel image B ad. So you want to constantly be looking at your ads and pivoting. Reporting. Facebook ads reporting allows advertisers to see how many online and offline conversions resulted from your ads. A conversion occurs when a person takes an action that is valuable to your business. This could be a purchase on your website, installing a mobile app, or viewing a specific page on your website. Online conversions are the measure that when you measure the actions people take online after people see or engage your ads, whereas offline conversions measure the number of transactions that occur in your physical retail store and through other offline channels after people see or engage with your ads. So coming into Facebook ads, um, you know, your business manager is set up. Now you want to create your Facebook ad. And when you create your Facebook ad, um, it really does guide you through it, which is nice. Uh, you can have the guided creation or once you get good at making ads, you can do a quick creation. But the guided creation is a really nice feature that they have, which walks you through all the choices of the campaign, ad set and ad levels, including your audience, budget and creative. And when you're finished, you have a complete campaign. The quick creation allows you to fill in minimal details such as your campaign's name and objective in any order. You can edit and complete your campaign later. Specify an audience. You can include or exclude people from your audience based on demographics, location, interests, and behaviors. And there are three main types of audiences your core audience, which is the default, uh, your custom audience, which is ad targeting option that lets you find your existing audiences amongst people who are on Facebook, and a lookalike audience, which is very common. Um, it's a way to reach new people who are likely to be interested in your business because they're similar to your best existing customers. So core, custom, and lookalike. Next, you'll want to select your placements. So the available placements may vary depending on which ad objective you select, but will include at least one of the following. News feed, stories, in-stream, search, messages, in-article, apps, and sites. The most common is news feed and stories. Budget and scheduling. So you'll want to set a daily or lifetime ad budget and a start and end date for your ad sets. I always recommend nothing less than four days. Ads manager will tell you how many people are likely to see your ad, so an estimated reach based on the budget you select. So the more money you spend, the more people it's gonna reach and always have a minimum four days. Based on which options you choose, your payment schedule and some optimization options may vary on the um, based on the campaign objective and placements you select. So your ad format. At the ad level, you'll name the ad, connect it to a page or Instagram account you manage, and select an ad format. So we have carousel, and we have single image or video. That's kind of what the, the screen will look like in your guided creation. Your creative is the actual image or video that you use and the copy you use. Um, also includes your headline and your call to action link. So that all falls under creative. 
your call to action uh, button. It's nice that Facebook has a kind of a drop down here for you. Book now, download, learn more, shop now, sign up, watch more, listen now, apply now, contact us. Makes it pretty easy for you. So add account settings. Add accounts. Set up or edit the name of your ad account. Choose your currency, um, you know, because this is a global, not just for US. Enter a business name, address, and tax ID number, and specify whether you're purchasing ads on behalf of a business or an agency. Pages, you can see a list of all the pages you have permission for and what role you have on each. And then payment settings, add or edit payment settings, set a top level spending limit on the ad account and find out when your next billing date is. It's a once a month billing. So that's kind of a real basic overview of Facebook ads. It can get really involved and deep. Um, my suggestion is to just use the guided creation and create one, you know, just spend like 15, 20 bucks just so you can go through and see what it's all about. Also go into blueprint and take the courses. Some of you have extra time right now. You can actually do that. All right, Facebook groups. So we kind of um, did a little bit of work in the Facebook group that I've created for this class. Um, so Facebook group is a space where people can come together around a common topic to learn, share, create, and discuss. We're actually gonna have a couple more discussions uh, this week for the Facebook group. Um, benefits of groups. You build a community and spark meaningful conversations. Nurture and reward loyal audiences and contributors. You can gain insights about your audience, develop sources for stories, and create content based on group discussions. So it's a lot of market research you can do in your groups. That's your audience. That's your prospects. Those are your buyers. So how to create a group? Super easy. Facebook makes it very easy for you to um, create a new group. Groups can focus on wide or narrow topics, so it can be as wide as gardening or it can be as narrow as a one-time local event. A group's name should explain the topic of the group and adding a description will ensure members are clear about its purpose. You can also add your organization's name into the name of the group or mention it in the description. Privacy settings. There are three main privacy settings, public, which creates an open dialogue about a common topic or interest. Anyone on or off Facebook can search for these groups and see their content and any Facebook user can request to join. Closed group controls who can and can't join the group. Anyone on Facebook can search for these groups and request to join, but the content is restricted to the group's members. So um, for our school group, it's closed. And a secret group, is you start a group for teams or subscribers that's hidden from the public, which means they won't appear in search results except to existing members or in the groups tab linked to the page. Groups for pages. So to stand out and engage both your current and potential audiences and subscribers, you use your main page to connect, communicate, and provide readers with what they're interested in. Businesses, influencers, and organizations that have pages can use groups to create spaces for people to communicate with each other about their business, brand, or content and build a community powered by engagement and trust. So a couple examples here is um, the running coaching that I do on the side. We have our main page, Ghost Runners Coaching, which we post to um, usually once a day, sometimes twice a day. And it's a uh, very similar post to what we post on Instagram. And then we have a strategy for that. And then we have a free group, which is called Ghost Runners Free Coaching Tips, which um, we try to post to a couple times a week. And this is a free group where we can post tips. Um, we can share things with others, kind of show our domain expertise as coaches. And we... Um, invite members to invite their members. So it's really started to build up. We kind of just started this recently. Um, and what we show to these people is we give them free info and then they connect back to us and say, wow, these guys really know their stuff. I'm going to check out their main page 
and hire them to do coaching. That's kind of the point. Um, there's a lot of other examples out there of companies that do this. You know, they give, give, give a little free, free, free. People build trust with the prospect and then they pay for the service, the full service. You can learn about your members this way. Um, you can ask questions. You can do polls. Um, you can ask questions when someone wants to join your group. So for here, free coaching tips, maybe one of the questions is, are you a runner or a walker? Um, what are you hoping to learn from this group? Maybe it's about nutrition. Maybe it's fundamentals. Maybe it's um, uh, to learn how to run a half marathon. I mean, it could be a number of different things. So you can actually ask questions to people who request to join this group. And this works for both public and closed groups. Admins can use this information to vet applicants and learn more about why they want to join the group. Maybe your free group, you only want it to be people from San Diego, so you vet people out and say, hey, ask for their location, as an example. Participate in your group. The more you participate in your group, the stronger your relationship with its members will be. So you want to join in the discussions, comment, ask questions, engage with members. When you post, you can ask a question or tag someone relevant. The goal is to generate conversation. So this does take a lot of work. It's time consuming. Encourage one, it, excuse me, encourage in-person events. Are there events you can host, local gatherings you can encourage? As group members build relationships with one another, it can increase engagement and become a place your audience returns to consistently and recommends to others. So prior to COVID, we were hosting uh, free group training runs where people would come together and run as a group out on the trails. Um, we also had so a couple of little social events. We had a nutrition class, a yoga class. I mean, there's a bunch of different in-person events we had, but we're able to create within the group. Now it's all gone virtual. So group rules, admins can establish up to 10 specific group rules to foster a civil and respectful environment where productive conversations can happen. You can post rules in the group to give everyone clear expectations for acceptable behavior. So it could be like no cussing, no bullying, um, maybe no sales pitches. You don't want someone in there trying to sell things to other people. Um, it can be a number of different rules, whatever you decide. Community guidelines. In Facebook groups, community guidelines can prohibit things like offensive language, personal attacks, all caps messages, spam, and more. A stated list of the guidelines can keep the group on track. You can also add a link to your own organization's values and mission statements. So these two group rules, community guidelines, they work hand in hand. Create clear, positive guidelines from day one and use these guidelines to keep members accountable. Moderate conflict quickly before it escalates to reset the tone of the conversation. Establish positive rules and be consistent. Turn off comments to stop escalation. When all else fails, fell in power to remove members from your group. So you really need to monitor these groups, especially as they get bigger. So I'm going to have you guys do a Facebook group discussion this week. Um, and this is more of a back and forth discussion instead of just posting and walking away like we kind of had before. Um, so in our group, I want you to create a new post to answer the following questions. Are social, network is, are social networks essential or an unnecessary distraction? Can you imagine a world without social networks? Give reasons for your answers. After you post a new post, you're, I'm gonna want, I want you to comment and respond to two other students' posts, okay? So you kind of do have to wait until other people start posting. So all three of these posts will be due by Saturday, May 2nd at midnight. So you're gonna create a new post and then you're gonna comment, respond to two other students' posts for a total of three. All right, so moving on to salary, pricing, and contracts. Again, just a quick overview to give you guys some basic tips as you're job searching. Um, so starting with salary, there's a bunch of different resources out there. You can look into your salary. LinkedIn has one. Um, so I kind of just typed in um, social media manager 
base salary, total compensation. Um, you can actually put in here the area where you live. So this is for a social media marketing manager, 48,000 a year, coordinator, strategist, um, intern, consultant. So these are kind of based on LinkedIn pricing. And this, I didn't put in um, a location in here, but if you put in a location, San Diego is probably a lot higher. Glassdoor is a great resource. This one, um, San Diego, California. So social media manager, 51,000 is average, 70,000 is high. And the last example I have is from, which one was this? Shoot, I didn't put in here the source, but um, I probably just Googled salary. So this one says the median is one hundred nine, hundred nine thousand dollars for a social media marketing and communications manager salary in San Diego. So um, huge differences here, but just to give you an idea of different sources. So packages and pricing, and this is just based kind of on my experience here. Um, a lot of people charge differently, but basically there's four main categories of services for social media marketing marketers. Um, strategy is the first one. Evaluates the online presence of a brand, gives feedback on what they are doing well and what they can improve on. You create a social media plan. I believe a couple of you guys actually had to do this for your senior experience project. I know my senior experience team had to do this. One-time services, non-recurring services that you can provide to a client, such as graphics creation, profile setup, or blog optimization. Maybe there's a client who says, hey, I just need you to set up my Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter accounts and make them optimized and look good. That would be a one-time service. So some examples are, will you tell me, will you tell me what to do when you talk to a client or a person? That would be a strategy. Can you fix those things for me? One-time service. Would you mind showing me? That would be more training and consultations. Will you do it for me? And that's more for a done for you. So these are kind of like the four basics here, strategy, one-time services, training and consultations, and done for you. So strategy, it's like getting paid to do an extended interview with the client. It does not promise that you'll continue working with them after the evaluation phase. Wildcard ideas make it fun and allow you to show off your creativity. You create the perfect pitch. Now that you know exactly what the client needs, you can create a custom proposal. Depending on your expertise, if you're entry level or if you've been doing this a long time, you can charge anywhere from $500 to $1,000 one-time fee. Always get paid up front. You do not want to be chasing money down later. And yes, clients and companies will take your strategy and not pay you. So always get paid up front. Um, if you absolutely have to get 50% up front, but don't deliver the final strategy until you receive the second payment. Examples of one-time services, social branding package, Facebook page setup and custom tabs, contests, single advertising campaign, profile or website optimization. Training and consulting. So team training, and I actually do this for clients. Support for your team in fully implementing recommendations from strategy. Charge by the hour or for a package. So a package might be one-on-one -on -one training, um, might be a total of four sessions. Um, recordings are provided, email and Slack availability, detailed tactical training on platforms designated from strategy. So an example of this would be, I had a client who was a veterinary hospital. Um, they had four people on their staff who were fully capable of doing social media, but they just didn't know how to do it for their company or um, they didn't know all the details of doing social media for business. They knew how to do it for their personal life, but not for business. So I went in there and I 
charged by the hour, and I trained the team of four on how to do social media for business, specifically their business, a vet hospital. That would be an example. So a done for you packages should include social media strategy where you grow, engage, and invite, monthly reporting, consulting and coordination calls, monthly or bi-monthly. Up to you how often you wanna do your calls. And that's a done for you, meaning you're doing everything for them. Done for you packages should not include social ads, management or budget. So ads, creating ads and managing ads is completely separate outside of the package. Um, content creation beyond basic social media posts, uh, meaning you're not going to do full on photo shoots and creating videos for them or writing blogs for their website, daily communication with clients. Um, that's a lot of work and that can take up a lot of your time, especially with certain clients. They will contact you all hours of the day. Managing, training, or coordinating with their team outside of your calls. You're, you're doing everything for them. You're not there to train them. If they want you to train them, then that's a separate from a done for you package. More than three platforms. A third flat platform could be rotating, meaning, hey, um, for sure we're always going to post on Instagram and Twitter, but every now and then we're either going to post on Facebook or LinkedIn. So the third one's rotating. And sharing the client's content to your profiles. You always want to keep things separate. So kind of a basic package to start things off with someone, um, entry level strategists, $500 a month would include creating one to five posts and distribute it on three platforms weekly, daily engagement, daily monitoring brands mentions, monthly um, doing metrics and measurement monthly, and one client call a month. So that is very skin and bones, basic package, 500 bucks a month. That's what my suggestion is of what to charge. Then you have a business package, which is entry to mid-level strategist for $1,000 a month. Sorry, I'm missing a zero there, but it's $1,000 a month. Up to two platforms maintained. Create one to three pins and distribute on Pinterest daily. So that's like an example. Um, engagement daily, monitoring brand mentions daily, social ambassador reputation management, so they're getting an extra social ambassador piece, metrics and measurement monthly, one client call monthly, overall strategy and results. So see the difference between these two. They're getting more posts, they're getting some pins, um, they're getting social ambassador reputation management, and they're getting overall strategy. So that's kind of the difference between like 500 and a thousand a month. Um, here is a basic template for a contract. Uh, if you do decide to do freelance or agency work, um, contractor work, you're more than welcome to copy this. You just kind of fill in the blanks here, but this is real basic contract. Uh, that's it for... That's kind of the basics for salary, pricing, and contracts there. Um, so don't forget also, Saturday, May 2nd, is your guest speaker assignment is due. Um, again, there are three recorded Zoom meetings with the guest speakers. You must watch all three videos and then follow the reflection assignment, which is located on Cougar Courses under week 15. You still have that extra credit assignment, the third blog, worth 20 points. Um, that's due Tuesday, May 5th, so next week. So here we have four things due coming up. Facebook group discussion questions, guest speaker assignment. Um, oh, I didn't actually, I took this one out. Salary discussion questions. Ooh, look at that. You guys got a freebie there. Um, and your extra credit blog. So you pretty much turned in a bunch of stuff this last Saturday. So this next week and a half is really easy, guys. All right. Three more things left. And then we are all done for the semester. So 
again, email me if you guys have any questions at all. Um, and if, if, if anything doesn't look right on your grading, please reach out to me. Have a great week, guys.